this bombshell report reveals exactly when FBI moles started spying on Trump by Aaron Moreno for truthfeednews.com. This update in the timeline for the FBI's informant inside of the Trump campaign completely proves that Obama's Justice Department was out to get Trump from the get-go. Now there's a surprise. According to reports, the FBI placed a mole inside the Trump campaign before an official investigation even began. From Breitbart, current and former officials apparently so fearful that an FBI informant's identity and role would be outed by congressional Republicans confirmed both to the New York Times and the Washington Post in an attempt to offer their own narratives first. Both outlets offer details that uh, readily identify the informant, but do not name him, citing concerns for his safety and warnings from U.S. intelligence officials. The details, however, match a person described in the Daily Caller as Stefan Halper, a Cambridge professor in longtime Washington, D.C., fixture who worked for three Republican administrations and has links to U.S. and British intelligence. The Times and Post are the first outlets claiming to have confirmed his identity and to describe him in such detail as to match the description of Halper. The accounts also indicate the FBI lied about when they first began surveilling the Trump campaign or might have done so without any particular, uh, without any particular intelligence. FBI officials have said that they began investigating the Trump administration on July 31st, 2016 after stolen Democratic National Committee emails were revealed on July 22nd, 2016 prompting Australian officials to come forward with information they received from Trump campaign advisor George Papadopoulos months earlier. Officials sold this version of events last year to the Times, which wrote on December 31, 2017, in a piece titled, How the Russia Inquiry Began, a Campaign Aid, Drinks, and Talk, of political dirt. When leaked, Democratic emails began appearing online. Australian officials passed the information about Mr. Papadopoulos to their American counterparts, according to four current and former American and foreign officials with direct knowledge of the Australian's role. However, the problem with that account is that the FBI informant had approached Trump campaign advisor Carter Page before that email release on July 22, 2016, and before the Australians came forward with the information supposedly after that. The informant first approached Carter Page at a Cambridge symposium on the U.S. presidential election in London on July 12, 11th to the 12th, 2016. Page was invited to the symposium in June 2016 by an unnamed doctor student at Cambridge who knew Halper according to a source. That timeline of Page being approached by the informant before the Australian tip-off was confirmed to the Post, which wrote, In mid-July 2016, a retired American professor approached an advisor to Donald Trump's presidential campaign at a symposium about the White House race held at a British university. The professor took the opportunity to strike up a conversation with Carter Page whom Trump had named a few months earlier as a foreign policy advisor. But the professor was more than an academic interested in American politics. He was a longtime U.S. intelligence source. And at some point in 2016, he began working as a secret informant for the FBI 
as it investigated Russia, it, Russia's interference in the campaign, according to people familiar with his activities. The timeline of events indicate that the current and former officials lied about when their investigation of the Trump campaign started and why. Some have speculated that former CIA director John Brennan had launched a spy operation on the Trump campaign as early as April of 2016, but it is not clear what might have prompted him. The leakers confirmed to the Times and the Post that the informant had also reached out to Papadopoulos in the ensuing months after he reached out to Page. The Post revealed that the informant had also approached Trump campaign advisor Sam Clovis, offering help to the campaign. In late summer, the professor met with Trump campaign co-chairman Sam Clovis for coffee in Northern Virginia, offering to provide foreign policy expertise to the Trump effort. In September, he reached out to George Papadopoulos, an unpaid foreign policy advisor for the campaign, inviting him to London to work on a research paper. The Post notes the informant's role raises questions about how he first became involved in the case, the extent of the information he provided, the actions he took to obtain intelligence for the FBI, and whether his interaction with Page was for the FBI or up for another agency such as the CIA. Details about the informant began leaking to the Times and the Post after House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes inquired about the informant last month. Officials initially went to the White House to try to stop Nunes from receiving the information, according to the Post. After first denying his request last week, Justice Department officials briefed Nunez and Representative Trey Gowdy. Yeah, and what came out of that? A standstill, right? A standstill. Listen, the whole thing was set up and Brennan was behind it with Hillary and Obama. And they put these people as fake actors in the scenario in order to start this investigation and also spy on what Trump was doing and everything else. Bottom line, it was a setup from the get-go. Brennan, uh, with Hillary and Obama, they, they, they discussed this. And then they got Brennan. Because Brennan was probably in on it, like even discussing it with Obama and Hillary at the time. Because they didn't want Trump in there. So they all fabricated this whole... Uh, uh, movie, so to speak, I don't know, a, a play, whatever you want to call it, this whole scenario, they set it up, and they put these uh, mediocre actors in where they belonged in order to start spying on Trump. And now Nunez and Gowdy, Nunez was going to subpoena them for the info, Gowdy steps in, uh, all of a sudden, the info is not out, you know, like we're going to release it to Nunez, but, uh, you know, we're not doing much of it. No, uh, I think I think this whole thing is uh, is uh, was a setup, and the actors were placed in position. They got the actors. Now everything is coming out into the open, and whether they, uh, whether they, uh, stop Nunez from getting any info, like, it, it, except by knowing the names. But meanwhile, the, the newspapers have the info. They really have the info. Because how did they come up with these answers? Because it was already leaked, but they want it leaked to their advantage, not to our advantage or President Trump's advantage. So this was a setup. Uh, and the culprits were uh, um, 
all set up. Even Loretta Lynch had her hands in it with the uh, lawyer. They were trying any which way. They went to plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E, and they still came up empty. How do you like that? And they're, and they're going to be held responsible for this crap because this has gone on far too long. And Mueller knows all about it. Mueller knows all about it, and yet he's still raking in the money and not stopping with his ridiculous witch hunt. I mean, it, it, it just, you know, but I, I feel like something's going to give now. Something's going to give, and, uh, and we're going to find out the truth, and they're going to be held accountable. Absolutely. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and again, thank you so much for watching.